really come back to my video. Ah. Something arrived in the mail. And I'm excited for this and you should be excited too because you can get a great deal for something that you might be interested in if you are into machining, engineering and maybe just general programming and the like. So let's dive right in by unboxing this big and then by building it and seeing what it can um, provide us with. I'm pretty excited. Let's go. <laughs> that is nice. <laughs> that is very nice. I never received um, an ear protection for, for a device like this, but cool. Oh goodness, it fits so tight. <laughs> and here it is. It's a tabletop CNC. Pretty small one by Two Trees. By the way, this video has obviously been sponsored by the wonderful people over on Two Trees. They were so nice to provide me with this machine and I'm here to provide you guys with an honest review and if it could be something for you. Now let's construct it. Oh, that is very cool. Oh, that's already attached. Now that, <laughs> that is simply amazing. Um, it's not gonna take me like three hours with my Shapeoko CNC. Back in the days, I already owned quite a bunch of CNCs during my time in the wood shop. Um, like this is the fourth or fifth. But that is nice. This seems to be easily constructible. Okay, very nice. It comes basically in one piece. Oh, goodness gracious. That is very cool. And this is the size. This is the working size. And more information on the specs later on the specifications. But that's already enough for most people if they just want to do kind of small projects at home and this is pretty good for size. It's kind of similar to my first CNC that I ever had and my first CNC was about three grand but this right here you can get I believe for about six hundred dollars. More information later on there. And that's Basically all about it. The last thing to do is to wire everything up, which I'm going to do in my workshop, and to attach the spindle to the Z-axis. They also provided me with a more powerful spindle, 500 watts, but you can also attach your own um, palm router, for example, on here instead of using a spindle, which is even more powerful, about 800 watts in output power. But I want to try out everything vanilla, as I always do here on this channel when I do reviews, like just using the Allen wrenches that they provided me with. I mean, it takes a tiny little bit longer, but in and of itself, this needs to stand alone. You need to be able to set everything up with the tools they provide you with, and they do a great job. It was perfect. It took only about 10 minutes total. 15 minutes, yeah, 15 minutes was it, and you have everything set up, which is amazing. I'm going to drag everything over to my wood shop, and then we are going to try this little one out. Let's see what it's capable of. Pretty excited, pretty big working area for such a uh, not very pricey CNC. <laughs> it's, it's great, it's great. I'm gonna see how it performs. Really excited. Let's go. So, I have now installed a 500 watt spindle once I arrived here at my workshop. It was very easy to do, just a bunch of minutes, but here's something that I'm running into. Um, I started the machine and I immediately noticed that the wire connecting the power supply and also the spindle in and of itself is way too short. We have this intersection right here, which is the main problem. If I have it in this position, this, this cable, then if I were to home the machine, then my cable is gonna be in the way and I just can't home it. I would tear the cable apart or it would get such a lot of tension that, that it would be unplugged. If I have it on the other side though, over here, then I can't run the machine totally backwards because it's in the way, obviously, be, because this part is connected to the front and this part is, is connected to the middle one. Another problem you might see is that this cable is too short to let the the, the spindle head go over to the right hand side fully. So my fix here is going to be to just basically cut open the insulation that we have here to make basically this intersection 
further away from the machine such that we have a longer cable. That's the only fix that I can come up with and if it doesn't work out then I need to do some electrical engineering and some soldering I think and just putting stuff together. But I think this should fix it, let's give it a shot and then let's make the first cut. Otherwise this machine looks totally solid and I really like it up until now. I want to see how it cuts. Let's proceed. I mean, this is never going to happen ever, but the cable is now long enough, it works out. Everything's still plugged in. Oh, he here's another cable which causes me trouble. Those do not lock in properly. So there are a bunch of things that are a bit of a design flaw, I think, but I mean, for the price tag, it's to be expected that it's not 100% perfect. So, um, it's not a problem at all, you can fix it with some tape or the like, but you need to expect some things to not be totally perfect when you purchase a machine like this. But this is what review videos are for, such that they can improve on what they haven't done completely right, and with the next machines, it's hopefully gonna be a better experience in some kind of way. But everything works out, the cable is long enough, I'm satisfied, let's do some cutting. So there was an SD card included with a bunch of files and I'm just gonna try those out but at first let us bring it to a proper position and this right here, no, this is the max speed of the machine when it comes to moving along the axes. I mean it would have been nice if they would have added like a 100mm option such that we can um, travel a longer distance with one button press, but it just is what it is. You can probably use something like easel to get it to the position that you would like easier by doing different controls using your PC. But I'm going to do everything just on this machine manual using the SD card and just the interface here, completely vanilla, and we're just going to see how it works out. So good news, it does cut, it does indeed. Bad news, I suppose this was an engraving and obviously with a ball end mill that I'm using here and an upcut, <laughs> it's, it's, it's not a good result obviously, but I think it says TT um, something CNC. Okay, let us introduce some custom files and see if those are gonna be accepted easily by the machine and then we're gonna see how it cuts through solid wood in some kind of way, which is the most interesting for me. I'm not using plywood or MDF or the like. So the program is done and the cutting quality is pretty good. I mean, it, it did what it had to do. It's pretty nice. Doesn't matter how it fringes right here. On the one hand it's plywood and on the other hand I'm using an upcut bit. So that's, that's totally normal. I can just send it down, but that was great. Yeah, that was good. Bit slow, but this is my fault. I could optimize the file a bit more and use a different cutter, which we are going to do now. I have to admit it's pretty damn cool to have a spindle machine again because my other CNC machines they just work with a palm router and this one just does automatically stop with the spindle which is really really cool and the cut in and of itself is very good there were no problems at all this was really really nice and if you were wondering what those are those are just basically hold downs for the stock because those made from metal are not um, very good. 
just because if your machine were to cut into one with metal, then your cutter would break. So I want them out of wood, so I'm kind of upgrading the machine right now by doing those little projects. All right, done. I'm gonna clean everything up <laughs> with my sander, with my drum sander, and then we're gonna see. But other than that, it just looks how it's supposed to look, looking pretty good for now. I did kind of, of a not good um, program in Fusion 360, I did a trace in, instead of an engrave because I was lazy, but this is not a fault of the machine. This is totally my fault if it turns out a bit fuzzy. So, I have to say, I'm a bit impressed by the surface finish. The surface finish is seriously great, there's nearly nothing to send. Now, there is another thing that I'm really impressed by. If you um, heard the footage, you were able to notice a very high screeching tone, especially in this direction right here. This is to, due to the chattering of the bit, like the flute is hanging out way too long. This is just due to the spindle not having enough um, space basically to, to fit the bit in. Now even though we had this chatter, my bit didn't break. I was fully prepared for the bit to break in between because of all the vibrations and just resonance and the catastrophe happening. Like, this is something that could easily happen, but it didn't and I'm glad it didn't. Even though this right here was a pretty hard test for such a small machine. I was using a hard wood. Next to it being a hard wood, it was also bowed. Meaning, on this side we had way more wood to take off and on this side less. So there was a fluctuation in the amount of wood that has been taken off each and every pass or especially on the first pass, which everything was. This was just the first pass. Now, this is really impressive, I gotta say, because this right here is a really hard wood. And this machine did it well. For such a small machine, I'm really impressed. So, if you are in a pinch and you really need to do adaptive clearing with a longer kind of bit, with a quarter of an inch bit, this right here is actually gonna work out if you are in a pinch. But I would not recommend it because this one could really break. And this wouldn't be good because they are kind of expensive and also they could fly in your face and literally kill you. But it didn't do that with me, so I'm very glad it didn't. But as mentioned before, I'm kind of impressed by what it did. I'm gonna stop this test here because I have seen everything that I need to see. I have seen the conventional and also the climb milling and it did well, it did really well. Very impressed. Now, personally, what is the final verdict for me when it comes to this machine? Over the years I have worked with a lot of CNC machines, smaller CNC machines, big CNC machines and also partially industrial CNC machines. And I gotta admit that, technologically speaking, we are pretty far in the game right now. When it comes to hobby CNCs, this right here is great. For the price tag, this is an amazing product. I seriously have to admit this. I would not recommend using the small spindle. To all of you, I recommend buying yourself either the 500 watt spindle or using a, a palm router and uh, attachment that you need to put it onto the CNC machine. This is what I seriously recommend to you. Otherwise, this thing for its size has the horsepowers. 
to basically deal with all situations that you could encounter as a hobbyist. Even when it comes to milling aluminum, I haven't done it personally, but I have seen a bunch of reviews where people have milled with this machine and this spindle right here, aluminum, which is really great, but I have milled through acrylic too the piece of the acrylic that came with, with the machine and it did do well. I mean, if it can cut hardwood, then it can cut certainly acrylic. I would recommend milling with this machine using a quarter inch bit because of the chattering and the possibility of the bit breaking right when it's milling and this is pretty dangerous. So I wouldn't do that, but when it comes to smaller bit sizes and maybe even engraving with a quarter inch bit, that is totally fine. It does do the job. We have done engravings also with the horse for my um, child, for, for Paulina. She loves the horse, by the way. Seriously, she seriously loves it. This was the greatest project I have done on this machine. For my daughter, it was amazing. And overall, when it comes to hobby CNC machines. This right here is great. This is the greatest one I have tried out yet. I have tried other ones from Saint Smart and also my Snapmaker, which was my first CNC. And none of those even come close to this machine. For the price tag and what it comes with, even in just fit vanilla, if you don't buy yourself the 500 watt spindle, this right here is amazing, an amazing deal. So definitely make sure to check it out. On the scale from one to 10, Considering you are just a hobbyist and not someone who wants to go into big batch productions, I would give this a solid 9 out of 10, in my honest opinion. It just did great. It did everything that I would want to see and see for if I weren't in the business and try to make a lot of money with it. For that, we got other CNCs like Shapeoko or maybe Carbide 3D or the Workbee or whatever it is. But those are higher price tags. For the price tag of this machine, that is absolutely amazing. And I just love the versatility. You can also put on the, the laser head. You can also get yourself a vacuum cleaner attached to it such that you don't have all of this mess lying around here. There's so much you can do with this machine and I just love it. And I can't wait to put this right here at home into my garage and get to work just putting a few more things out like this turtle. I really like this turtle. I'm gonna give this to my daughter too. This is gonna be for her little cup. Putting it on there. And I thank guys for watching. And I hope you did enjoy what you have seen today. And if you did, definitely make sure to check out the link at the top of the description to get yourself this machine or maybe even the lower grade, not the pro version. Or maybe if you wanna be more than just a hobbyist because you think you can outgrow this machine in no time at all, then definitely make sure to get yourself the 650 version, I think it's it's the name. And I hope this isn't the last time that I can work together with two trees because this machine is awesome and I really like it. It's very stylish, it was easy to assemble. Just overall the experience was great. Hence a nine out of 10 and I would recommend it to everyone who wants to get started in the CNC business. And up until the next video, I'm with you guys a flammable day. See ya.